<laughs> we just turned the Orange County Chopper into a chariot. That guy scares me. All right, let's try to do a, kind of wonder what it's gonna do on the top speed for the tracks. Craig thought it was gonna do like 20. Let's, let's see what happens. That downhill helped us a little bit. Yeah, it did. <laughs> the world's widest worst donut. Everyone got a chance to drive it, and we had a blast. It performed so much better than we had ever expected. And for just 4200 bucks, which is including the tracks, it was it was cheap fun. But then the true spirit of doing it really sank in, and I got my redneck on. Down to the doing it. Then we decided to take it to the roughest, iciest, most brutal terrain known to man. An icy grave that has swallowed hundreds, if not thousands, of Jeep Wranglers. The giant ice pile at the mall parking lot. So we're gonna attempt to do what no one's ever done ever. I've seen tons of people attempt it, never seen anyone get more than a couple feet. We're gonna drive the whole way across this. Honestly, it's about 70, 80 yards. And uh, Caleb's coming with me. I am? Yeah. <laughs> Every time I do this, I end up somehow to, upside we down. To, we need it for the proper weight distribution. Oh, my side will be definitely heavier. What do you think, Craig, can this be done? No. You don't think so? <laughs> it's doing it, doing it, doing it, do, do, doing it. Now I'm a pretty optimistic guy, but this pile was solid ice. And with regular tires, this thing didn't stand a chance. And I wasn't exactly sure that it was gonna make it. So I bought a winch and a couple of extra toe straps just in case it got stuck or broke. I also did not read the mall parking lot snow pile handbook to see if this was actually okay but everything worked out perfectly, and this thing walked across that ice like it was nothing. Honestly, I think it probably could have done it in two-wheel drive. I had all confidence when I was up there. It had tons of track. Dude, it did. It didn't move. Or, it didn't waver like at all. It went over anything. What was that huge snap that we heard while we were up yes. there? Oh, uh, maybe it was one of the springs kind of kicking back. Oh, uh, could you hear that, Craig? That huge like crack. It was like, shut. Like oh snap! It broke something. So to properly claim ownership of something, you have to name it, and we can't name it doing it because I already named my wife Suburban doing it. We got to give it a real name. And this thing has been awesome. I've been completely impressed with what this thing's done. I think there's only, I think we can all agree there's only one proper name for this thing. And that's Brad. Brad, I got big plans for you. The first challenge is your standard see who can get their rear wheel closest to the cone without knocking it down or spinning out right away. Demonstrated with the regular sized trike. I'm so scared that things gonna come flying off the wheel and just take my head off. If you hit a, if, if you if you hit a curb going sideways fast enough, you're gonna it's gonna roll. Like really? it's just yeah for sure. <laughs> that was good, but you spun out. Okay. Now you should have done that, but a little bit closer. One, two, three. You were like four feet away from the cone. I'm next. Alright. Can he keep to his own spin out roll? Did that count? 
That didn't count. Drifting. That doesn't count. I wasn't. I wasn't drifting. No. And everything was going great until. Oh. oh. Just the exhaust. The exhaust fan down, but I, I, I put it back up. <laughs> Here he comes. There he was drifting. There he was drifting. I see his tire mark. I think he was like way far. Stop drifting around that one. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh! You almost killed almost Tim! Killed Tim turn! Yeah, I was. I, did I hit you? <laughs> that was like crazy! Throw it in, throw it in! Oh, 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 oh. Was that a drift? That was it! I don't know if that was a drift! That was a drift! That's my last one right there. Well, it can't be. That's my that's my stuff. Well, then you were drifting. There that was a drift. More, my thing was like this. What thing was? You're, you were not completely sideways. Okay. Here he comes, throwing it in. Is that even sideways enough? Yeah. Do it! Do it! That's not even worth measuring. Throw your body into it. Ooh! So hard! That was a good looking drift though. That was pretty good. I thought I spun hey, out though. You're getting the drift. You're getting the drift! The problem is because unlike the drift trike, the little one, this thing only turns that much. Well, right! So you can't recatch it once it's gone, it's gone. Right, you can only go so far before you will just whip out. Right. Let's see if it moves. That is twerky. And here is an awesome montage. Okay, it's not awesome because I'm not really good at riding dirt bike. But the little editing, it might look mediocre. Oh man, this thing is crazy fast. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I saw a video where a guy was running one of these in a hair scramble and he crushed everyone out of the whole shot. You could see this thing is just very <laughs> as soon as you hit like 20 miles an hour it's just gone like a rocket. All right, so we're at six kilometers. We just started. I've been full throttle. Where are you at, Craig? Yeah, it just, it feels extremely slow. I didn't know we were such an inconvenience for everybody. Nine minutes, huh? Oh shoot, we're down a, we're, we're down a whole bar. We're at a, that puts us to what, like 60%? Probably only about five more minutes before I go to limp mode. We probably need to get off the main road. Turn it off and I turn it back on, so. Oh, you rebooted it. You got plenty more. Does that feel look planted to you? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, let's get one going. Make sure I go through this, and then we got some more stuff we gotta go through. Gotta get this thing stuck. Awesome. <laughs> oh. oh man, something new inside here. Have we met our match again? What do you think, Craig? Uh, is, is it still locked up? I don't think it's locked up. It got looser. It loosened up. Yeah. 
Let me back. Let me back it up. Let me see what. They're rolling. They're rolling. Is that good or bad? It's not great. <laughs> uh, yeah. See that that edge was so sharp there that it got the it got the track kind of under it. I'm gonna go take a leak. Guys, guys. Oh, come on. Look how bad, bad that looks. It looks. That's, that's so, that's what that rubbing is. That's so bad. And, and that big sprock is all twisted in. You know, if you yeah. wear earplugs, you just can't hear it. So it's yeah, just not happening. Move. That does not look good. But this is one of the most, it's a pretty wicked hill. The problem is it gets too narrow. Um, I think this thing will go straight up it though. I don't know if I'm gonna, because of that, I'm not gonna straddle the hill, but I'm gonna go right next to it, which is even worse. I found this nice big hill. There's no way Sean's gonna beat me. Let's see what we can do. I'm at 67, 68, 70, 71, 72, 72, 73, 73, 80 miles an hour. What? Where did you come from? How deep of water can it go in? Now, if you're riding a dirt bike, it's going to get submerged. That's just, that's, that stuff just kind of happens. I'm told that this thing can go completely underwater. Let's find out. Yo, Craig, come here and get me, uh, get me turn this thing on. The rope binding up on the tire. That's <laughs> why I love this. Stop, stop, you're finding. I can't hold it. It's going to be rope burn. Oh. Going. I think I'm stuck. That stuff was this deep of muck. It's still running now. Let's switch it out. What do you think? You impressed? I don't know. It still runs. How awesome is that? Check it out. We got the KTM lawnmowers, of course. Strapped it on. Got some hose. The decks work. Watch this. Steering is not, not the greatest, but we're working on it. We'll, we'll figure it out. I can't wait any longer. Let's go. Let's go take it for a spin. Let's go out to the big field. You can see exactly where it buckled. Like right next to the weld, right there, yeah. 
We need to figure out how to get this thing to lean. It needs a turn and then lean like, like, a, like a skateboard truck. Right now, it's, just, it's, it's, it's too hard to steer. Nope. Well, we gotta go fix this. And just when I thought we had a week's worth of work cut out for us, I find out that Craig had been working on it all night long and it was done. And it was better than I had ever expected. Yo, Craig, that is awesome. So the, the main problem with, with, with the first one was that we really couldn't turn. And you, couldn't, you, you, you pretty much took away all the functionality of the dirt bike, but it did look pretty cool. This way we have the full dirt bike sitting here, full functionality of the dirt bike, and if you uh, move those things out, I can still lean the bike and drive it like a regular dirt bike. I should be able to do this. So this should be the world's fastest electric lawnmower. Let's go test it out. <laughs> See how well mows. Four, I think I hit 44. And it was working awesome and it was tons of fun. But in order for it to qualify as being the world's fastest electric lawnmower, it had to be able to cut grass. Not necessarily mow at top speed, just cut grass at some point, which it did. Greg, what's going on? What was that? That? Yeah. Oh, you were rooster tailing it through the swamp. Oh, that's not good. And while I was getting really comfortable riding the KT mower, that's what I'm gonna call it right now, unless you guys have a better name, leave it in the comments. I may have gotten a little too comfortable and thought it'd be a good idea to try to wheelie it. You all right? I'm good. <laughs> you really went over the bars there. Yeah, I did. I yeah. thought of a way I could move the deck up a little bit. Did you? Yeah. Right here's, right here's where it got you. After a few weeks and my wrist feeling much, much better, it was time to set the record. So we took the asset to the proving grounds to see how high the new bar will be set for the world's fastest electric lawnmower. All right, so the decks are set a little bit lower than normal, so we have a little extra drag. We're gonna try to go for the record anyway. I just wanna do a disclaimer. Kids, what I'm doing is dangerous. Drinking soda. Don't drink soda, it's dangerous. Let's go break the record. I gotta go back to the camera, but I think I hit like, like 68 kilometers. You were flying on there. Did you catch me on there? I tried, but it didn't read right. Quarter. Should we do it one more time? Should we do it one more time on the, on the asphalt? <laughs> What is that? I got 39. <laughs> the tire. Wow, they're so hot. I know. They're not supposed to get that, that rubber. You feel that? <laughs> Let's check that thing out. He modified this so that a full motorcycle, less the tire, just bolts right in there. And then somehow he's got the throttles and stuff connected. That, my friend, is a thing of beauty. Those handlebars look a little off. Here it is, huh? Yeah, this, so this is, I put a 650 in it, but I prefer the original rear end, which I have over here. It's more stable. Okay. This is not, it flexes too much. Okay. And the other one has bigger arms and better, right. better pivot points. So you want to go for a little ride? Yeah, let's do it. Ah, <laughs> the handlebars. <laughs> Yeah, at high speed, it's not as stable as the original rear end. 
Is this where they have Woodstock, like the Woodstock, Woodstock? Yeah, it's original. Oh, wow, no, it's my first time. Oh, look, there it says Woodstock right there. Yeah. There we go. Welcome to Woodstock. Man, this is so cool. You guys are gonna love this thing. Ninja. This thing's actually pretty, pretty put together. Ninja. All right, so I asked the guy, I said, I gotta put a bike together. Can you give me some tools? I got a great team. Mm -hmm. Thank you, the team. <laughs> Super glue. That's hard. All right. Well, let's uh, let's check this thing out real quick. Okay, they're not. Are they for, are they functioning forks? Yeah. Okay. So so those are actual functioning forks. That's pretty cool. Uh, those are real headlights. Three LED headlights. Little tiny tires. What's the brand of these tires? They're so cool. HID headlights. Modal. PIAA. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania International Amish Association. Yeah. HAG Super. Hag Super. You gotta love Hag Super. We get to more action right here. This this video is sponsored by Doorway. It's something you walk through. Try it sometime. And next time you walk through a doorway, like I'm doing right now, use promo code Bikes and Beards. It helps us out. Is there a windshield? This is how shit I feel when he rides this little bike. Let's uh, let's see if this thing fires up. Turn the key on. Wow, Craig. Levers are up here. I didn't set the levers. Is that what you think? <laughs> I'm gonna ride like this. Yeah. not fast enough. We gotta do something about it. Ah, ah. I hope I need that door frame. Ah. It hangs out too far. The stupid blood bars. It's got the path to it! Yeah, baby! <laughs> this thing moves! Alright, let's do it. The visor down. Yo, how fast was that? What? Yeah. I could do more.
it is, there's standby. So what is it? Suzuki Hayabusa. <laughs> It's a Suzuki Hayabusa. It's stock. People love the jet ski bike, which by the way needs a name. Comment your ideas below. But the big question is, what will the boating guys think when they found out that we ruined a perfectly broken jet ski? So to find out, we found some boating guys. I'm having some jet ski issues. You guys wanna help me out? Look at that. <laughs> You spray people with that? Yeah. Really? <laughs> that is insane. Well, be safe, brother. Yeah, yeah thanks. Have a good one, guys. Yeah. After that, we took it out for some more testing. We took it on the highway, and it did awesome. It had speeds up to 75 miles an hour and still had more to go. Then, we took it on some twisty roads to see how well it would handle and it handled surprisingly well. Then we took it to a scale to see how much it weighed and it tipped the scale at a whopping just over 800 pounds. That's as much as a gold wing or a manatee, which makes sense considering that it's longer than the largest production bike ever made, sitting at over 10 feet long, which is also longer than most manatees. I don't know why I keep on comparing it to a manatee, but you get the point. You're probably thinking that this thing's more of a novelty. You'd be wrong. This thing's actually a functioning, purposeful vehicle. And just to show you guys that it's not just that, it's, it's also an asset and this thing could make money. We're gonna do Grubhub with it. Here you go, ma'am. I got some grub up right here. Thank you for choosing grub hub. Why is it all wet? Now this bike is 100% street legal. Me and Craig made sure of it. We made sure it had everything it needed to qualify for PADOT standards. Which is why I was very surprised when this happened. Oh uh, shoot. <laughs> Got it. This should be fun. <laughs> How you doing, sir? I'm doing good, officer. Calm down. Please. Reason for the stop, I didn't see an inspection sticker on your device here. Do you have your driver's license, registration, proof of insurance on it? Yes, sir. Your boating license. license. Alright, yeah, let me see if I can let me see if I can find my boating license. Okay. There's my uh this is my license. Everything's good? Awesome. Try and get the vehicle inspected and thanks for cooperation. You're good to go. Cool, thank you very much, sir. Okay, okay. Hey you too. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we just got this thing in. Uh, we gotta see if it runs, but I, I kind of want to check it out. Caleb made a good observation. The guy, the guy told us on the phone, this, had, this was like a $9,000 frame. We didn't know that it had $20,000 worth of damage to it. Look, look, at it look, look at this. They welded that back together. Oh my gosh. Like what horrible, hor what horrible thing happened this to this guy. thing that this thing just got <laughs> totally cut right up right right there i mean the frame's clearly been painted a million times look 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 look, look deep in there they painted a bunch of times look at that dent and that that's not hard that, that's hard to do yeah, that's that crazy is. so if, if you're if you're wondering like can the frame take a roll it's already taken a roll and they the, got eaten by a dinosaur the question <laughs> the question is can it take another one there's a pvc pipe Fitting and apparently Craig says that's the gas. That's gas tank. How would you know that? Oh, it is the I gas tank. What's the smell like? It smells horrible. Why does every side by side we buy have bad gas? I don't know. This is probably sitting for a while. Uh, this is always a good sign. <laughs> Brake fluid. 
I mean, how much brake fluid does it actually take? You have to have a, this big of a bottle. This is enough to like bleed the system in like a, a very large vehicle. Uh, tires look pretty good. Yeah, I do feel like we could almost take all those rims off and sell those for like 2 k Like that's like, those tires and rim combo, that's an expensive combo. Yeah, yeah these are apparently, these, these are actual bead locks. Uh, warrior tires. All right, what, what's going on with this? This hose is going to that's nothing. That's a differential breather. Oh, look at this. And that's just what's hanging this? out. That's what? a zip tie mount, maybe. Oh, it's like uh, it's oh. like those bells that hang off the bottom of motorcycles. Yeah, right. <laughs> but for a side by side. Okay, so 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 look over here. This is like a custom built job right here. That says park, reverse. You can go reverse to low, like without moving anything. <laughs> and then you got high. But there's no neutral. Unless is neutral in the middle of those two things? Well, why would there there's no N? That's true. And I wonder if they have it set up that way so you so there's no lock in between. So that when you're uh like rock crawling, you gotta like rock it or do I don't know what, what rock crawlers there's do the, actually. Look at this, these are loose. What? That bottom universal's loose. This one. That one why? Loose. The jam nut here's loose. So this is hand, this is hand like loose. They have a nickname for these things. It's called death trap. You see that? Why is that so loose? I, I, I would have, I would have driven this thing if this thing fired up. And that one's loose. Is there like this whole rock climbing subculture we're going to find out and it's all going to make sense after that? Maybe. Oh yeah, this thing, those things on there were loose. They're supposed to be loose. Something just clicked on. Yeah. Really? All right now. TV speakers. Yeah. Hold up. You say that, you didn't tighten the bolts and then you get that out. This is how you get in. If you knew we were taking this out tomorrow, would you just sleep in there so you have to get back out? Yeah. Oh, you spun this over. I did. Whoa, Whoa. hey, hey. Stuff's, Stuff's going. Stuff's happening. Should I fire it up? Try it. All right, it's got, first of all, it's got 1,300 miles. What? That's 13 of the hardest 100 miles but they were all like flipping over. <laughs> does, does it work that way? It rolled 1,300 times in Moab. No. Oh. The bolts. Crank that. Let's see what that does. Yeah, we may not have enough bolts to fire. It's cranking fairly slow. It ran great before I rolled it down a mountain. It ran great when I drove home from the dealership when it was bone stout. It ran great before I blew the engine up. <laughs> All right, so just to try to confirm it's whether it's just to try to confirm whether it's bad gas or not. Well, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Well, here's what $4,500 worth of uh, custom off-road quad will get you. How many people can you have on the chariot at the same time? I had five. <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 
we just turned the Orange County Chopper into a chariot. That guy scares me. It's got a nice lean. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Then I convinced Craig to go for a ride with Mike. You'll notice that Craig has both legs inside of the chariot bar. I chose to have one leg in, one leg out. Just in case things got out of control, I could bail. Mike informed us that a better strategy is to duck inside the chariot. We later found out that he has used that maneuver a few times after losing control over the bike. After a leisurely ride back, we lined up the trailer ramps and somehow we all agreed that this would be the best way to get the chariot on the trailer by letting Mike do it himself. We got it! <laughs> Pretty sure that's exactly how we planned it. I don't think that could have happened any better. Right. And as you can see, the bike was 100% an absolute success. I've literally ridden thousands of motorcycles in my lifetime, and I can say with confidence that this motorcycle right here is right there in the middle of the pack between like the Kawasaki Versus and the Harley Davidson Deuce. How you hey, I'm doing well, how you doing? Best looking engine crane I've ever seen. You like that? I do. Thank you much, you have a good day. But we know that every great and even average motorcycles need a proper name. Now, despite what our attorneys say, there is only one appropriate name for this motorcycle. So how did we make this work of art street legal? Well, that's simple. You see that piece of plastic down there? That's a piece of a 2003 Honda Silverwing. And according to me, the bike started as a 2003 Silverwing. But then through a series of slight modifications, every single component got replaced with the exception of that plastic piece and the Honda service manual that goes with it. Everything worked just like a regular bike should and nothing malfunctioned, not even the brakes. Now, I did everything I thought I needed to make this thing street legal. So, let's go see what the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania says. Hey, you guys do motorcycle inspections. Just set it right here for now if you can. You got some kickstand? I don't. There we go. There we go. So, I think I've seen the best use of an engine hoist ever. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, I think that's a whole heck of a lot better than sitting over there and not pulling a motor out. That thing's street legal, you don't write it. Yeah, street legal on 56 plus Canada. I don't know, they're better than anything I can do, so yeah. you're doing all right. You're saying from the edge of the cul-de-sac? Yeah, from the, uh, from the, yeah, from the cul-de-sac. Okay. It's 100 feet. So if this is any indication of how our welds are gonna do on this, on this build, we might be in trouble. Hey, Craig. Your weld broke. What? Yeah, good job. I don't know, it showed up and it was broke. Oh, yeah. So far, so good. Look at that flex. And it kind of just does that perpetually. It just doesn't stop swinging. So I would imagine at around 90 miles an hour, rolling down the highway with this, you might get some type of death wobble. Good news. Steering dampers. The, the death wobble is going to be on your end. Oh, shoot. My end's going to be planted. So we never actually measured it and figured out how long it actually is, including the bike. So let's uh, figure it out right now. 108 feet. 108 feet and, set and 8 inches. Okay. I thought it'd be bigger. Not gonna lie. That is awesome. Okay, here we go. Right, let's do it. Oh, 
Holy cow. Oh, Greg, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, I'm, dr I'm drifting. I don't know. Can I turn now? No. No? No. <laughs> You're I'm literally going sideways down the road here. <laughs> Burn it! I'm, I'm drifting through this entire oh, road. Shoot. Oh, shoot! Oh, no. This is the world's largest, longest motorcycle drift. Oh, oh. My seat fell off. <laughs> I can't sit on anything, Craig. <laughs> It's not burning out, is it? And let's get it out of the way. You're still back at the curb? Uh, all right. What do you guys think? Is it gonna make it? Almost able to get out of the pond by myself, but because it, we, we converted the two-wheel drive, we needed a little bit of help. Can he pull me out? Yeah. I don't want to fry the belt. Which kind of reminds me of my favorite Bible verse, Galatians 6.2. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. It's not bad. Where else can we take this? off-road stuff. Now we know that the poor man's Sherp is indeed amphibious. My next question is, and I'm sure you guys are wondering this also, how fast can it go? We might be out of gas. So you're gonna take this and just give that to your foot. I do that one with my foot? Yeah. Okay, you're gonna have to do all this <laughs> while people are shooting at you. So, no, just grab it with your hand. Okay. So that's to start it. We're gonna turn the throttle about halfway and you're gonna kick it three times. Right. Whichever way you feel comfortable kicking. Right there, not, not hard. One more, just like that. Okay, we're gonna turn the ignition on, one click. All right. So you're gonna kick it again. Three times this one. Just, just tilt it starts. What? <laughs> okay. Oh, so what, you took choke off? Choke Chokes on. off. Quarter you throttle. Choke off. Chokes off. It's supposed to be like that? Yep. Keep this leg on the ground now. Put this foot up on and let the clutch out slow. There you go. He's going to make it the whole way back? He's not making a home on that. He don't got enough of padding. There's no way. No way. Port Royal is max. I think he's going to get determined. He's going to do it. If the bike doesn't break down, he's going to get the whole way.
handsome guy with a 1960s motorcycle. Look at this guy, Mr. Rockefeller, and his brand new motorcycle. How do you like your how do you like your electric start? Einstein. Part of the appeal of this motorcycle is how cheap it is to get you to the track. You don't need to own a truck or a van or a trailer or anything big. They say you could put it in the back of your hatchback. Well, of course, I don't own a hatchback because I'm a man. So I decided to see if it would work in the smallest vehicle that I do have. The other claim is that this thing would be cheaper to race. Less money spent on replacing tires and cheaper smaller tracks. And both of these can be confirmed because a new set of tires for these things is only about 140 bucks. If you're to replace the tires on your 600 Super Sport, you're looking at double that. And if you have a leader bike, you're looking at double that, but also you're replacing the rear tire every second track day. And the track bike for these smaller bikes are considerably cheaper considering that we rented out the entire track for 500 bucks for the afternoon. Now, obviously those other bikes are faster, but this should be just as much fun. But to be honest, I'm not here for fun. I'm I'm here for business. I'm here to figure out what the track lap record is. Hopefully, we're gonna beat it. But first, I need to beat Craig on the reigning champ pocket bike, which is kind of awful to ride, but hilarious to see Craig riding it. But the problem was, Craig could not get the pocket rocket to run. So we challenged it with the legendary, the famous, the most loved, the Gary bike. Are you ready? Ready. You say go, Craig. Ready, set, go. After warming up by beating Craig on the Gary bike, it was time to attempt to beat the world lap track record for this track. So what's the uh, what's the lap track record? For anything, we're probably talking 23.9 for 23.9. Yeah. What's the lap track record for a bike like that? I think we're at 24.1. Can that bike? Can that bike? Beat the lap track record. There's probably not a rider here today that can beat that record on that bike. The novice class, we have a novice, yeah. like the adult limited, have limited experience. Fastest the track blower can go around. The golf cart does 48 seconds. Huh. I can beat that. <laughs> what would be an impressive number to you if we, if we hit it? 28-1. 28-1, all right. If you're in the 30s, you would be limited to the adult limited class and we wouldn't allow you to ride that bike. So I'm just working up to see if I can, if, if they'll let me ride my own bike. <laughs> <laughs> He later told us that the lap record for the version of the track that we were running was in the 21 second range and was held by 450 supermotos. So for me to beat the record, I'm gonna have to get fast. I was initially disappointed with my times, but continued to try and master every corner and apex to the best that I could, trying to break later and later and to come out of the corners faster and faster. But it wasn't enough. Like most things, I couldn't do it by myself. So I got line advice from the master. And after a few more lap attempts, I was ready for the record. Let's go break the record! 